Okay, you guys, in this video, we're going to look at the last topic in the 6.1 notes, which is topic four. Um, in topic four, we're going to go over uh, um, RNA and the structure and some of the functions of RNA, um, which on a functional level, RNA uh, kind of does a lot, a lot more than DNA is actually doing. Um, DNA is basically, this, the, the function of DNA is just to hold on to all the information, store all the, the, the genetic information, information needed for the, the cell um, and the organism. But RNA, actually, there's a variety of RNA molecules that do lots of different things. Uh, real quick, though, let's go over the structure of RNA, which some of this, all of this, should hopefully be a review of stuff we've learned before. Um, RNA, just like DNA, is a nucleic acid. It's made up of, it's a polymer of nucleotides. So it's a bunch of nucleotides bonded again and again and again. Um, the nucleotides that make RNA are, are just like the ones that make DNA with some, uh, some minor differences. But they have a pentose sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. Um, and then there's a, a three prime and a five prime end, um, just like DNA. Uh, and one difference, though, is that DNA, um, uh, well, first of all, DNA is usually double-stranded. That's one big difference. And then RNA is usually single-stranded. Not always there's exceptions, but usually RNA is single-stranded and DNA is double-stranded. Um, also, the sugar that's found in the nucleotides that build DNA is deoxyribose, but the sugar found in the nucleotides that build RNA is ribose. It's another difference. And then the other difference, the last difference is um, the nitrogenous bases that we find in DNA and RNA. Um, in DNA and RNA, you'll see um, adenine and guanine and cytosine in both DNA and in RNA. But in DNA only, you're going to find thymine pairing with adenine. And in RNA, you wouldn't find thymine. You would find a different nitrogenous base called uracil. So that's the difference. Uracil is in RNA. Um, there's RNA nucleotides that have uracil, but there's not RNA nucleotides that have thymine. Um, whereas in DNA, there's nucleotides that have thymine, but there's not DNA nucleotides that have uracil. Um, and there's still the complementary base pairing rules that exist. Cytosine always pairs with guanine, um, even in RNA. Um, if there's base pairing happening, it's going to be between C and G. Um, and um, with adenine, it's going to be with uracil, not with thymine. So in DNA, adenine pairs with thymine, but in RNA... When there is base pairing, there's going to be adenine with the uracil. Um, so that's hopefully a lot of that's review. And so and then I want to talk about some of the functions of RNA. Um, RNA does have a, a large variety of functions inside of cells. Um, there's, there's lots of different types of RNA molecules that do a variety of different things. One of the main functions of RNA has to do with protein synthesis, which we're going to talk about a lot in the next set of notes, um, which is the actual process of putting together proteins, which are made of amino acids. Um, and actually building those proteins, synthesizing those proteins, so then those proteins can fold up into their correct three-dimensional shape and structure and then do a million different things that are super important inside of your cells. But RNA is actually involved a lot in, in putting the proteins together and, and, and synthesizing proteins, which is super important. Then there's something called micro... Oh, so the ones that are involved in protein synthesis um, are... There's messenger RNA ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA, or we call it mRNA, rRNA, and tRNA. I'll talk a little bit about those um, in a moment, and then in the next set of notes, we'll talk a lot about them. Uh, but those are involved, three types of RNA that involved in um, protein synthesis. And then there's things called microRNAs, um, which there's a variety of different types of microRNAs, but these are basically short, shorter pieces of RNA molecules. Um, short strands of RNA, and they usually are involved in regulating gene expression, meaning like they they play a role in determining how much certain genes are being expressed and which genes are being expressed more and which genes are being expressed less in certain cells. And so in your guys' DNA, there's all these genes with instructions to build um, usually proteins. Um, and these microRNAs are involved, and we'll talk about this more in the next set of notes, they're involved with um, kind of controlling a little bit, helping to control which of those genes are being used at any given time in a cell. Um, so that we call that regulating gene expression. Um, and then there's things, RNA um, called ribozymes. Ribozymes are, are RNA molecules that actually fold up into a, a shape, kind of like a protein. And they actually, um, some of those RNA molecules, they actually act as enzymes sometimes, so they're, which means they, they, they help catalyze chemical reactions. So there's some enzymes that are um, 
Well, most of your enzymes are proteins. Uh, we've talked about that a lot. Enzymes are proteins and they catalyze chemical reactions. But there are examples of enzymes that are made of RNA. We call them ribozymes. And again, those are, those are made of um, RNA molecules that fold up into shapes. And actually, there are certain reactions that they help to catalyze inside of the cell. Um, and then lastly, RNA is sometimes the genetic material for certain, um, in certain situations. Um, almost always DNA is the genetic material holding on to all and storing all the information. Um, but there are examples, um, specifically in viruses, there are some viruses, it's common in viruses that um, some, it's common for some viruses to not have DNA as their genetic material, they actually have RNA. So it just depends. Some viruses have DNA as their genetic material, and some viruses have RNA as their genetic material, and that's what they're going to um, infect cells with, um, allowing them to take over those cells. Uh, and then the the last thing I just want to go through um, in this topic is I kind of just want to give you guys an intro to the, the three main types of RNA that we're going to talk about in the next set of notes. Um, these are the three types of RNA that are involved in synthesizing proteins, so rRNA, mRNA, and tRNA. So just to give you guys a, a, an intro, but just know we'll talk about this a lot more um, in the next set of notes. RNA stands for ribosomal RNA, and these are actually RNA molecules that are going to bind together with proteins to create ribosomes. So your guys' ribosomes, ribosomes are those small organelles, um, just to remind you guys, that are in this, that are in all cells. All cells have ribosomes, and those are the, that's where proteins are being made. So ribosomes are actually building and putting together um, proteins. Um, and actually those ribosomes are made of rRNA. So there's a specific type of RNA called rRNA that helps build the ribosome, like the ribosome is made of it. Um, <clears throat> and those ribosomes are each made of a large and a small subunit um, of these RNA protein complexes that come together and then that's where um, proteins are going to be synthesized. So that's the location where we're going to start building proteins. Um, and then there's messenger RNA. Messenger RNA, are, it's called mRNA. Um, it's going to be, uh, these are uh, pieces of RNA that actually are going to copy information that's in your DNA. So they're going to, in your DNA, there's, there's genes with instructions to build like proteins, for example, um, which is usually it's proteins that they're coding for. And messenger RNA um, will actually be built to kind of copy down what the, that gene says. So it's going to copy down the letters in that gene in the DNA, um, but in, 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 in an RNA version. Um, and then it's going to, that's what's happening right here. Here's the mRNA that's being made that's copying information in your guys' DNA. And then that mRNA will be sent to a ribosome. Um, and the ribosome will take that mRNA and use that information to start putting together uh, a protein. Um, and so we call it the messenger because it's basically going to take the information that DNA has and then deliver that information to the ribosome. Um, and so in eukaryotic cells, your, for example, your DNA stays in the nucleus. We want to protect in the nucleus. We don't want the DNA to leave the nucleus. Um, and so um, one benefit for mRNA is that it allows you to kind of copy it down what's in the nucleus and then it can leave the nucleus and then go find ribosomes where uh, that information can be used to put together proteins, which is what you guys see here. Here's a ribosome, and here's the mRNA, and that information is being used to put together amino acids to start building a protein. Um, on that mRNA, uh, when the ribosome gets it, the ribosome is going to read the, the, um, uh, each grouping of three nucleotides on the mRNA. So there's these special groupings of three nucleotides called codons, so every three nucleotides on the mRNA is called a codon, and each of those codons corresponds to different amino acids that are going to be put together, um, which we're going to talk about this a lot more detail in the next set of notes. But that's just a quick little intro. And then this, you guys have probably seen this before in your regular biology classes, is a codon chart, and it tells you what those three letters on the mRNA, what amino acid it's going to code for. Okay, so you can see like right here, there's the letter AAA, that's the codon on the mRNA, AAA. And if you look at this chart, if we find AAA, here's A, and then A, and then A, it codes for the amino acid lysine. And so if you look at this picture, actually, here's lysine right here being brought to the ribosome. And so each of these codons, each of these three letters is, is codes for a specific amino acid that's gonna be put together here at the ribosome. So that's what the messenger RNA is doing. Um, and then uh, there is the transfer RNA. The transfer RNA is this other piece you guys see in this picture here. Um, it's called tRNA. These are RNA molecules that have that are 
basically going to bring the amino acids to the ribosome so that they can start being put together um, at the ribosome. And on the tRNA molecule, each one has um, a special set of three letters as well, a special set of three nucleotides. Um, but this is called the anticodon, and these anticodons can um, pair complementary to the codons on the mRNA. So on the mRNA, you have the codon, and then on the tRNA, it has an anticodon that can match and um, because of that matching, it's going to bring a specific amino acid. And so like this codon that had AAA, there's a tRNA molecule that has the anticodon UUU, and that tRNA is bringing a lysine, which like I showed you guys, AAA is coding for lysine. Like we need to bring a lysine, that amino acid. Um, but it's carried here at the ribosome. It's brought here to the ribosome by these tRNAs. So these tRNAs are transferring these amino acids um, to the ribosome so that they can start building this polypeptide that's going to become the, the protein. Um, and so anyway, that's our intro to what we're going to talk about a lot in the next set of notes. Uh, but anyway, hopefully that makes sense. RNA does a lot. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's it.